It is really important to know that, about the terminology of mixers so that we can communicate with musicians and with sound engineers. But right now, I really want to get into some real world situations where we might have to set up some instruments or microphones with a mixer. And I'm going to talk you through all of the steps involved in doing such a thing. The first situation I want to talk about is a very, very simple situation where we are going to hook up one microphone through a mixer channel we are going to adjust the equalization of that microphone. We are going to make sure the sound comes out through the left and right speakers. And then we are going to send a little bit of that signal into one of the stage monitors via the auxiliary. Let's get started. So here is our microphone. This is a very standard, very common, very good SM58. Very, very nice microphone. I plugged it into an XLR cable and I have the other end of the XLR cable right here. So the first thing we're going to do is find the channel of the mixer we want to plug it into. In this case, we're plugging it into channel 11 and we're going to put the XLR cable right in there. Now let's go over to the other side of the mixer. I'll put the mic here. Okay, once we've plugged in the microphone to the mixer, the first thing that we should look at is the gain knob. We're going to turn it up a little bit just so that we can hear some things out of the microphone. Now, the next thing we're going to do is look at the equalization. We're going to make sure it's flat for now just so that everything can come through and then we will adjust it later. We'll leave the auxiliaries and we will make sure that the mute button is off. This is really important. Sometimes you forget it and you spend hours looking at other knobs and you forget that it's muted. The last thing we'll do is bring the fader up and I'm going to leave it at this line here which means zero dB. Zero means unity, it means whatever comes in is the same volume as whatever comes out. And after setting the fader to the right level, we are going to press LR. And that means we're sending it out straight to the left and right out speaker outputs. Now let's try hearing what comes out of the microphone. Hello? Hello? There's nothing coming out of the microphone. Well, that's because my left and right channels are all the way down. We have to bring them up and we also have to make sure that they are muted. Hello? 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 Now, if there's still nothing coming out, you might want to adjust your gain again. Hello? Hello? There we are. Hello? Hello? Is that coming through the video? I think it probably is. Well, my voice is now coming through the microphone and it's coming out the left and right. As you can see, there is a little light on the channel that indicates if there's signal coming through. And this is a good way to check if there is indeed a sound coming through your input channel. If there's nothing there, it might not be the channel that's, that's not working. It might be something before the channel. Your mic might be broken. Your cable might be broken. It might be something before that. Now that we have the sound, it's time to adjust what the, what the microphone sounds like. The first thing we're going to do is tweak the gain so that it's not too loud and not too soft. It's really important at this point to make sure that the fader is up to about zero, between zero and minus six, and then we'll adjust the gain knob so that it's at a reasonable volume. This, this lets us have all the faders at a relatively neutral level before we start mixing, before we start adjusting the level so that your faders don't get all wild and you know one of them is really high and one of them is really low. We want them all to be around zero when we start mixing. So that's what the gain knobs are for also. They're also called trim knobs for this reason. Now once we've gotten the mic to a reasonable level, we're going to look at the equalization. Um, let's say that I am, uh, you know, like a motivational speaker or something, and I put the mic really close and, you know, I use a lot of S words, I use a lot of P words, and my voice sounds really bright and aggressive. Well, in that case, I can bring the treble of this down so that my voice sounds slightly more muted, it sounds a little bit more pleasant, that's a good reason to use the EQ. Another good reason to use the EQ is if your microphone is feeding back. If I'm getting a really high pitch coming, coming through the speakers because of feedback, 
I can also turn the high frequency down so that that will mitigate the feedback. Likewise, if I get a low, low pitch coming through the feedback, I can turn the low frequency knob down. And there are a whole lot of other ways to use EQ and honestly, it could be a whole book. So we're not gonna to talk too much about it. It's enough to know that you can shape the sound with an equalizer. If you ever have access to a mixer, it's really good to sit down and play with it for a while and see and get a feel for what it does. The last thing that we said we'd do is we were going to use the auxiliary out to get some of this voice into a stage monitor. So in order to do that, we are going to find our channel 11, which has been unmuted. We're going to find auxiliary one, and we are going to turn it up a little bit. Once we've turned it up, we're going to have to look over at the master auxiliary knobs and make sure those are turned up as well. So auxiliary one, we're going to turn this knob up. And at this point, the voice should be coming out of the stage monitor and we've, ach we've achieved our first goal. The next hypothetical scenario that we're going to think about is a situation where we are going to hook up two different microphones and we are going to send them through a bus so that we can adjust their levels together. And we're going to adjust their individual levels so that they're balanced. And yeah, I think that's all we'll do for now. Let's take a look at these microphones. We have two SM58s. They're attached to XLR cables. And just as before, we are going to come around and hook them up to the back of the board. So the first mic will go into channel 11 and the second mic will go into channel 12. Now that, the mics, now that we have the mics plugged in, we can adjust, we can make sure that their sound is coming through the channels and we'll do exactly the same thing that we did before. We will turn up the gain knobs just a little bit so that there is sound coming through. We will unmute the channels and we will turn the faders up to about minus five or minus six. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, we'll go over to the main left and right sections and we will unmute, make sure those are unmuted and we will turn them up as well. At this point, we can check on the microphones. Hello, testing. Hello, testing. The gain is not high enough. Hello. Hello? Okay, I see what I've done. As you can see, or maybe you can't see, but these L and R buttons have not been pressed on these two channels, and that's the reason why there's no sound coming out through the main. I need to press these down, and that sends the output of these channels through to the main left and right. So now if I turn them up, hopefully, hello, 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 now we have two um, working microphones. Okay, let's balance these microphones. Say that we have two speakers and one of the speakers speaks like this and is a very loud speaker and the other speaker is a very soft speaker. Now, even though they're using the same microphones, you know, they're not coming out at the same volume out of the main left and right. We want them to come out at the same volume so that the audience can hear them equally. So this is a point where we can use the faders. We can bring, hello, 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 that's the right channel. Hello, hello, and we can bring that down so that he's lower. And we can bring the other microphone up. Testing, 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 testing. And of course, you know, there's a lot of checking that you have to do. There's a lot of tweaking that you can do, but this is generally how you mix two signals together. But now that we have both of the signals very carefully balanced. We don't want to have to move them around a lot. We want them to stay there. And if we need to adjust the speakers as a, as a group, we want them to, we want just one fader to move them up and down. This is a perfect use for our buses or our groups. So the first thing that we'll do is turn off the left and right buttons so that the signal is no longer coming through the main left and right. The next thing we will do is press the one and two buttons to send these signals to one and two. Now, as a more advanced uh, note, the pan knob in these situations 
determines whether or not the signal goes to bus one or bus two. But as long as we have them in the middle, they're going to go to both. We're going to treat them as going to both. So we've clicked one and two. Both of these signals are going to bus one and two. Now all we have to do is go over to the bus section where a good over to the bus section make sure bus 1 and 2 are not muted so the light should be off and then we're going to turn the buses up and there's a section here that says group 1 to LR group 2 to LR we're going to make sure those are plugged in these differ from mixer to mixer but usually there's a button that tells you where are you sending this bus where are you sending this group and there will be a button that says send this group to the main output. So now that we've sent this group to the main output, we should also, hello, hello, yeah, very good. We are getting, as you can see, signal out of the left and right. And we've achieved our, our task. So that concludes our introduction to Mixer's tutorial. Um, before we go, I just want to make a few notes. Um, the first thing is that obviously there was a lot of things I couldn't cover there are a lot of buttons on this mixer that I haven't talked about. One of the reasons I haven't talked about them is because obviously this is an intro to mixers and it would take up too much time. The other reason is that some of these buttons and controls are controls that are not common to most mixers or not common to every kind of mixer. And I wanted to talk about the parts of a mixer that you will find on almost any mixer so that after watching this, you can be confident of going up to any mixer, you know, any sound console, any recording studio or live situation and basically know what's going on. So, you know, those, those are the reasons. But again, there's a lot of things to learn. It can take years to figure out a mixer. It can take years to figure out how mixers work in general. And um, if you're feeling confused or you're feeling like you don't know what's going on, um, just stick with it and feel free to leave a comment or messages and we'll try our best to reply. <laughs> Ada, where are we? We are at the Rotunda, a community theater and venue in West Philadelphia. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, <laughs> hey,